po si G. Tanji. Uh, nagtatapos ang ating buwan ng pag-ibig for February. And of course, when we talk about love, the most important of all is love for self and country, right? And that's why we are talking about the Latinos of Asia. It is a new book that is out. Kasama natin ang author ngayong araw na ito, si Dr. Anthony Ocampo joins us. He is a sociology professor and he wrote this book um, called The Latinos of Asia. We're doing exclusive expert excerpts here and let's get to know Dr. O. Hello, Anthony. Hi. It is amazing to be here. I can't believe it. I can't believe you wrote this book. This is amazing. Oh my God, it's a long time coming. Like I was telling someone earlier, I probably wrote my first paper on this topic back in the year 2000 in a class with um, San Francisco State Professor Don Mabalon. Okay, yes, people know her in the community. She is uh, definitely someone that we all look up to and we will celebrate in the month of March because it's Filipina American Women's Month. But we end February with love for country and love for culture mm -hmm. and that's what really you've encapsulated in this book I've been I've had the amazing opportunity to read some excerpts it's a lot of work Anthony or Dr. O may yeah. I call you Dr. Absolutely, o? Yeah. okay Dr. O you're very young as a professor uh, why did you want to become a professor the reason I mean when I think about that time when I was in college I remember I, I grew up in Eagle Rock mm -hmm. and so Eagle Rock's a place where 20% of the population is Filipino and then I went to a college where there were literally 20 Filipinos in the entire freshman class. Okay, let's talk about that college because that's a pretty <laughs> impressive college. Where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to Stanford University. Very smart. Uh, I have to say it's, it's a very prestigious school. Mm -hmm. What did you major in? I majored in ethnic studies there. Ethnic studies. Yes. Was there Filipino studies there? See, that's the thing. There was not a single class on Filipino-American studies taught by a professor, which is why it was so important that I met Don Mabalan at Stanford, because as a student, she taught the very first class on Filipino-American studies at Stanford University. Okay, so I'm so. sure that had an impact on you on why you decided to become an academic. Yeah, absolutely. So on the first day of class, I remember her telling all of us Filipino students, go get your PhDs. And I guess I kind of just stuck with it. Okay, so that's why you're a doctor, because you did complete your PhD. But not only that, you decided to take two masters as well. Yeah, so right? this was my opportunity to see whether academia was for me. And doing those two master's degrees, I got to find out that absolutely, this is a platform that I wanted because in college and high school, it's so rare that Filipinos ever get to read about themselves. And I think that has a terrible effect on the way they feel in the classroom and later on in their jobs they feel like their lives and their perspectives don't have anything to bring to the table but this is exactly what I wanted to do with this book is show Filipino kids that never get to read about themselves show them that they absolutely have something to bring wherever they go into whether it's medicine law dance arts film and so that's the reason I wrote this book okay let Wag na natin patagalin, basahin na natin. Dr. O and I will be reading exclusive excerpts of the book Latinos of Asia. It's available on Amazon. Let's get to it. Dr. O? For all intents and purposes, there are many out there who forget that Filipinos are in fact Asian American. Most would agree that when people hear the word Asian, Filipinos are rarely the first people that come to mind. This seems baffling considering the size of the Filipino population in America. There are more than 3.5 million Filipinos in this country, in America. But it's as if nobody knows we're here. Most Americans have no clue that Filipinos are the third largest immigrant group behind the Mexicans and Chinese. In California alone, the nation's leading destination state for immigrants, Filipinos outnumber every other Asian American group. Despite their size, people would be hard pressed to name anything distinctly Filipino. Try naming a Filipino dish, a Filipino public figure, a Filipino musician. Most people would be stumped. When it comes to their place in America and the Asian American community, how did Filipinos become an afterthought? This is the puzzle that I hope to unravel with this book. 
Understanding how people fit into the American racial landscape matters tremendously. Race permeates nearly every aspect of our everyday lives, whether we realize it or not. It affects which neighborhood we live in, which schools we attend, our chances of finishing our education, our likelihood of getting a job, and whether we're paid well and get promoted at our job. And these are just the socioeconomic outcomes. Race affects who we become friends with and who we decide to marry. It influences our physical and mental health our musical interests, and what we do in our free time. Race also affects how we judge other people. Whether we think someone is a trustworthy person, a decent neighbor, an intelligent student, a hardworking employee, a capable leader, and even a great lover. <laughs> in other words, race is ubiquitous. Okay, so uh, I don't have my dictionary with me. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. O, ubiquitous. ubiquitous. It means it's everywhere, right? Yes. That's what it it's means. Everywhere. Nasa lahat ng lugar. Yes. Race is a conversation that we need to have. And that's why one of my modern day heroes um, commented on this book, Jose Antonio Vargas, uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and founder of Define American and hashtag Emerging Us, who incidentally is also undocumented in this country. Uh, says that the Latinos of Asia is essential reading, not only for the Philippine diaspora, but for anyone who cares about the mysteries of race identity. I'm getting goosebumps. Wow, this is a powerful book. Thank you, you. You make statements that really get to my core. I mean, it, it, it discusses a very uncomfortable uh, conversation that, that we really need to have in this country. Yes, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I think about people like Jose, who as an undocumented person, he's completely put himself out there. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine what emotional and physical toll being a trailblazer for the Filipino community and the undocumented immigrant community has. And so I think about people like him or other Filipino trailblazers in different industries and yes. different businesses. And, you know, when I think about all the rejection that comes with writing, being an author, those are the people that I get strength from. Yes, absolutely. Okay, magbabalik kami here on Kababayan today. Nagbabasa pa rin tayo the, the Latinos of Asia, how Filipino Americans break the rules of race. We'll be right back.